Oi. 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 We can do this. We make it playful. It's fun. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, let's have fun. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Let's have fun. We're both absolutely passionate about music. <gasps> we understood that the act of making music, only a few people can do it. So we were like, how can we make this something that everybody can do? I think it's some sort of uh, ball. Musical balls. Musical, yeah. The musical mutineers have a clear idea of who they'd like to assist them on their quest. Peter Jones, we see that he has experience with distribution of other products everywhere in the world. And also Stephen, he has a lot of experience with social media and for what we are doing is very important. So the ideal would be that we get a little bit of both of those. Hello everyone, my name is Pasquale and this is Nathan. Hi. And we're here today to offer 4% of shares in our company for £100,000 investment. So what we are doing is that we are creating a suite of hardware and digital products uh, to make creating and playing with music uh, something that everybody can do. And our first uh, product is Oddball that kind of looks like a regular ball, right? But the cool thing about Oddball is that when you bounce it, it makes music. So if I've got cymbals loaded, for instance, if I just play it a little bit, you can hear that I can really control the intensity of how hard I hit that. And say, for instance, if uh, I can use melodic instruments, I can control the note as well. Which we think is pretty cool. That is cool. Oh, sorry. We, sorry, we poker face, poker face. A, we actually have a video of one of our favourite users that, yes. is, that is really good with it. Yeah. So we started this adventure uh, with a crowdfunding campaign. We raised £220,000. Uh, once the product was ready, we started selling it to our e-commerce store. And since then, we generated an additional £250,000 in revenue. What we'd like to do now is invite a couple of you guys up to uh, have a play with Oddball, and we'd love to see how you have a play, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Pasquale Pio Totaro and Nathan Webb are hoping to gain investment with their novel approach to making music. So let's play, let's play the, uh, okay. the track and get you going. They're asking for £100,000 in exchange for 4% of their business. <laughs> That's pretty good. Their claim that their product makes making music easy has been substantiated by the Dragon's demonstration. Oh, yeah! But it seems to be more fun for the participators than the spectators. Away, man! Sit down! <laughs> Let's crack on! <laughs> oh, he wins! Oh, he wins! Oh, very good. <laughs> With a bit more practice, Peter Jones and Stephen Bartlett might make modern-day Mozarts. But for now, they make way for Tuka Suleiman, who wants to explore the origins of the innovative instrument. Great pitch. And Thank really, you. I want to go back to your journey of how you came about it, who's the brains behind it. So we, so we both um, met at the Royal College of Art, right. where we were studying uh, product design together. So this actually started off as a, um, as a college project, and it's kind of steamrolled from there. So as it stands now, right. have you got an IP? Yes. yes. So in right now, we've got accepted patents in Italy and the US. Well. And what does it uh, retail for? 80, 89 pounds. And you've sold 350,000 pounds worth? Uh, uh, it's in, in the last seven months. So how many are you selling each month at the moment? Last month, how many did you sell so last this month? Last month we have sold about 900. What does that equate to in revenue? Uh, it's about uh, 80k. Cool, you've done well. Yeah, yeah, we're, um, we're, we've worked hard. A unique and protected business with healthy sales appears to be music to the investors' ears. Stephen Bartlett, one half of the entrepreneur's target dragon duo, got down with the product, but he wants to know if the product will get down with the kids. There was a word you said twice when you started your pitch, which was the word cool. <laughs> And I've seen so many products in my career that fit into the cool category, but don't also fit into the commercial opportunity category at the same time. Mm. And you can see something, it can be cool, but then it can be a gimmick and a fad and it can fizzle out. Right. Yep. How does this become a business with longevity? 
It's, it's an interesting question. Uh, so, so the thing about Odd Boys, uh, it's much more than just a musical device. We really see it as innovating the way that normal people consume music. So right now you can sort of either really listen to music or you can be a pro musician. There's no in-between ground and we find that, that kind of ground really the place that we want to fill. And we think that this could really actually be a cultural movement. And how, what's your marketing strategy? How are people discovering it for the first time? Mainly, I, I think, Red. through digital marketing. Mm. Yeah. So okay. Facebook, TikTok. Yeah, it makes perfect sense for TikTok specifically yeah. because it's visually compelling. That will drive organic sales of people just through curiosity. And we were all curious when we saw it. We were really excited to see your video, which I thought wasn't very good, actually. Thank God me and Peter stepped up and did what we did, oh, because honestly... Peter, Peter honestly, nailed it, I have to say. Even your app, your app was like five out of 10. For such yeah, a cool visual product, it was really quite ugly we, and dated. We're, we're very aware of that. We're constantly evolving the app, and we are gonna give the UI a bit of a, a spring clean and, uh, and, and sort of make it more fun. The entrepreneurs acknowledge that they need to retune their tech. Now Deborah Meaden wants to learn more about the duo and their dynamic. What do you like to work with you two guys? Ah. Uh, what would you say about him? Go on. <laughs> no, no, I think um, he's very, very good on detail. He's not only a details man, though, he can also think creatively. What's so rubbish about him? Ah, oh, he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I am no, a pain in the ass. I am a pain in the ass. Uh, the, what's, what's rubbish about him? Uh, he wants to say it, he just can't get it out. He, yeah, just, he yeah. just, oh, now's your moment, come on. I would say, if I can yeah, say you say, Why don't you say I can it? Say it. I'm, I'm just very direct when I have to give Yeah, OK, that's what I was going to say. What's bad about that? It works, uh, it works, it works. And s same, same thing? <laughs> I think when you're looking at how things communicate to an audience, he's really good at it. Uh, in terms of, like, the negative thing, uh, let me think about it. Hang for on. A no, uh, so uh, there, is, there is a reason I ask, because at the end of the day, this will start or fail on you guys. Right. This is a story that has to be told mm -hmm. because nobody's out there Googling, I'm looking for balls that can help me make music. Yeah. You know, is it? So, so it's really important right, right. the way, A, the skills that you have within you, mm. but also the way you work together. Yeah, mm -hmm. for us, that's, really, that's a really important part of success. I didn't get to say the bad thing about him. <laughs> hey, oh, he's got it. He's he's, he wants desperate. to say it. He is desperate to say it. It was a singular, it. though, at least, wasn't it? Say it. No, no, say we it. moved on. We moved on. <laughs> Guys, I'll tell you um, where I'm at. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I think you two have presented exceptionally well. I think it's a great product. Honestly, I can't really fault you. So I'm sat here thinking, well, I should want to make a, an offer then, shouldn't I? All right. And I think that the only thing that's stopping us is it's just not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I'm really excited to take this home and try it. The musical balls fail to bounce with Sarah Davis, and she decides to step away from the investment opportunity. And it appears that Peter Jones, the second half of the entrepreneur's preferred Dragon's double act, is also struggling with the idea. With this, I have to go with my instinct. Um, and it's really weird because there's a connected parts of me. I wrote down the people we're currently working with and the level of influence of where this could go. Um, you know, and it does help having a contact with the head of Universal. It does help having a very good contact with the head of Amazon. But then I'm just sitting and really struggling with it. Um, Indecisive, very indecisive. Yeah, it's a real, honestly, it's a real tough one. All right. It's tough. How much did you come in asking for? I didn't write it down, I was... 4%. 4%, ugh, yuck. Because this could well just be a Facebook ad business. And I genuinely deeply believe that the thing that makes it transition from being just something cool people see on Facebook to being something that is part of culture I think that's a really difficult, but possible, but very difficult thing to do. Mm. Requires a certain expertise, an understanding of how to penetrate culture. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's gonna require luck. It's very hard to predict these things. Mm -hmm. I don't think 
it's going to get there. So for that reason, I'm out. All right. Okay. Ooh. okay. Guys, I tell you what, I'm, um, I might live to regret it, but I'm really sorry. I'm not going to invest. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm really sorry. I'm going to say that I'm out. A huge blow for Nathan and Pasquale as both of their favoured dragons drop out of the deal. But is Deborah Meaden marching to the beat of a different drum? OK, guys, I um, kind of blew my cover a bit at the beginning when I got all excited and said, that's really cool, we're halfway through your pitch. I love it for lots of reasons. Um, everybody has music in them. They might not know it, yeah. but everybody has music exactly. in them, you know. And I think the route that you take next is going to turn this either into a fad that people buy, use a couple of times, put in a box and think, well, that didn't catch on, or it's going to have credibility. And I mm -hmm. think it's the credibility piece that you really have to tread a careful line on. Mm -hmm. um, but I am going to make you an offer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to offer you all of the money I want 10% of the business, mm. or I'm happy to share. OK, thank you. Thanks for the offer. Deborah Meaden makes a play for the business to the tune of 10%, but she's also happy to share the spoils. As the only other dragon not yet out, will Tuka Suleiman be up for a collaboration? You have a very good offer from Deborah. And I know if I made you an offer, I'm going to want more than 10%. So I would give you half the money for 7.5%. Do you want to go talk to the wall? Yeah, I mean, I think we need to, don't yeah, we, really? Yeah, let's do it. Nathan and Pasquale retreat to the wall to talk tactics. OK. Hmm. Deborah Meaden's offered 10%, with an option to split her investment with Tuka Suleiman. He's happy to share, but won't go any less than 7.5% each. I think Deborah's offering a better deal. As it stands, all offers are well over the 4% the entrepreneurs initially presented. All right. Yeah, this. Okay. You want to deliver that? Yeah, all right. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. So, what we were talking about is that we are willing to put out 7%, um, and we are also open to the option of two of you sharing. 7%? Yeah. Not me. Uh, not me. OK. Not me. I think you've got, you've, got quite a, you've got quite a job to do. That's good. What well, can we say? Thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, th thanks a lot for your offers, anyway. OK. OK. You've made a mistake, guys, but, hey, good luck. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you. See ya. The curtains come down on Pasquale and Nathan's pitch as they refuse the Dragon's terms of investment and leave the den with nothing. Oh, well, plan B. I'm totally shocked. I thought that was an unbelievably good offer. I think that we did the right decision to walk away from the 10% offer. That counter offer was our top line, and I think that it, had we kept eroding that top line, we probably wouldn't have necessarily been happy with what we would have come out with. So you win some, you lose some. I hope they don't live to regret, though, because 10%, 7%, yeah. that could be the difference between success and failure. Success yeah. and failure, yeah. Hey.